Shopify website design mistakes. Let's get to it. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is David and I'm a highly rated Fiverr choice seller. I primarily do user experience reviews and that means I've reviewed over 1,000 websites and a large portion of that has been basically Shopify stores and I constantly see the same beginner mistakes again and again and again and again and again <laughs> about the mistakes that beginners make when they create Shopify stores. So in this video, I wanna give you a high level overview about all the different mistakes that people make with their Shopify stores from their email marketing to the homepage, product page, design, layout, et cetera. All that stuff is going to be covered in this video. Like always, make sure to check the links in the description for timestamps as well as any resources mentioned in this video. So let's begin. Number one is have a call to action at the top of your site with your online store. I can't tell you how many Shopify stores I reviewed that have no call to action. And it's just you open up the site and it's either just hits you right with the products or just hits you with a broad image, a broad generic image. And it's the wrong way to approach it because the top section right here is basically where you can have your hero image and your call to action that helps brand the site and tells people where they are and what is going on. So it's really, really important. This is actually one of my clients and I'm really happy to see how they vastly improved this. Before they had just like a tiny little sentence right here. <laughs> it's like really bad. And they made a bunch of other specific mistakes. So first thing, your call to action should be short and sweet and to the point, okay? You don't wanna make it overly wordy. And then another aspect to pay attention to is focus on the benefits people get from the product, okay? The product, the course, whatever it is you're selling. People don't care about the features. Okay. It's like when I sell my online course, the benefit is that, okay, I can show you how I can show you how I built a website and how you can build a website that can make you a thousand dollars in 18 months. Nobody cares. Like, whoa, well, I have the best technical details on SEO and like, nobody cares. People want the benefit. And so that's why I'm happy to see like that. At least they're, they're trying to think like sexy, uh, like a sexy design. Like I, I like that. I like that. They're trying to figure that out instead of before it was like made out of hundred percent aluminum and you know, da 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 and does this and this like, no, it doesn't, people don't care. Like this is a little bit better. Like purifies water, thermal insulated, self cleaning. Those are way more interesting. And I like that they have this free shipping with code first 50. And that is really it. And so a couple other aspects too. So once you have your call to action, make it short and sweet, and then make sure that the button that you have contrasts with the site. And so for example, if we take a look at websitecreatorpro.com, there's a reason why I have this button bright red because it contrasts with the blue. Like if I made this button blue and <laughs> it blend in with this, people wouldn't click it as much, okay? And so that's what you really need to pay attention to. It's another one of my clients that I just reviewed. And so like, what do you see wrong with this, this section right here? So they have the elements in place, okay? But like, this is a little bit wordy. You know, our mission is to provide fresh, flavorful, and nutritious meals. Meals that are convenient, affordable, blah, 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 blah. And then it's also difficult to read because like this image is gorgeous. Like look at the bokeh, look at the focus right in the middle. I love it. The thing is, the text is difficult to read because this needs an overlay. And when overlay is, is like this, <laughs> like this is a black and white image I have, and this is a blue overlay. They need to kind of do something like this, so the text is a little bit easier to read. And then obviously, like they, their buttons, look at that, they blend right in. You want your buttons to stand out. I know it's a small little thing, but it's important. And then last button, like it's okay to have one or two buttons, but make sure that the button links to an important page like this is taking me to the shop page, for example. Whereas like another issue with this, like this website is professionally designed. I really like it, but look at that. Look how long that took. Like every time this image changes, this call to action is great, but it disappears and then it slowly reappears. And then they have the link changing constantly to like where they're directing people. Sometimes it's directing people to the about page. Sometimes it's directing people to the services page. Sometimes it's directing people to a specific uh, product page or service page. So you want to make sure that you have one link and that like the image changes, but the call to action stays the same. It's always here and that the link to the like wherever the button's linking to stays the same as well. Number two is focus on benefits, not features. So this is another one of my client sites that I uh, worked on and I think it's fantastic in terms of like, like for example, what they do is they sell leather clothing items like leather jackets, leather pants, etc. So if you were to like, okay, I'm gonna start a store and sell leather jackets, what would you do? 100% uh, premium quality, blah, 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 very generic and boring. 
Whereas like this is much better where it's like shine like the star you are, add the latest celebrity designs to your wardrobe. Really nice way to focus on the benefits that you get from buying their products. And so like something I really like here is like we can jump into like celebrity jackets then you can take a look at all the different like items that they have. It's like, ah, oh, okay, I can get that jacket or I can get this jacket. Uh, you know, th that's really creative way to sell a product. Okay, so that's why I always say like focus on benefits, not features. It's critical regardless of whatever it is you're trying to sell, whether it's clothing or an online course. You know, like if we just take a look at uh, my online course, Plan, Build, Promote, Profit, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to push this course. But it's like you got to focus like on the benefits. OK, so build a one thousand dollar passive income website in 18 months a behind the scenes. Look at how it's done. You're here. Let's do this. And so the, the point of this is like it's not like like I have the best technical deep dive into SEO and learn what the best plugins are and like, OK, that that content's nice. Like, OK, really nice deep dive into how to design a website or how to create a logo. But like the end goal, the end goal that people are interested in is like, how do I get started with a website that can generate passive income? And so that's where you got to focus on the benefits over the features. And I think this website does a fantastic uh, job with this. Look at this beautiful call to action done really well, short and to the point, not overly wordy. And it has a nice creative angle that really grabs your attention and gets you into the site. And they have a bunch of different interesting products. So that's number two, focus on benefits, not features. Number three is make your homepage a visual menu for the website. So a good use of the, the homepage with a Shopify store is just to make the whole thing just a visual menu. And so what I specifically mean by that is like you're going to have your products, right? And you're going to have multiple products and you're going to have different product categories. Just use the homepage to introduce all these specific product categories, your best sellers, et cetera. But also include the key elements that every store needs like this. For example, we have nice call to action at the top. Dogs make a house a home benefits over features done really well. This is actually a client I worked with and it looks great. So, you know, I personally would go ahead and cons I would consider adding in a little welcome message right there. Uh, they personally have it right here. I mean, I kind of personally, me personally, I would lead off with this right here about us or something like that. So people really connect with the site more quickly, but again, not bad because uh, everything else is in place. Like we have this four dogs collection and we have a bunch of different products, a big image, crisp and sharp and easy to see okay it's not the images aren't blown out and it's all blurry and so we have the four dogs collection right there and then we have four owners collection right there and then we have shop for all four dogs for owners again and then we have different specific products that we can quickly and easily jump into and learn more about and it's done really well and what you've noticed is like there's no buy now button on this it's like basically shop now okay and so I, that's also another mistake i see where People who have a Shopify store, they'll take like their one product and then you can buy the product on the homepage. That looks so weird. Don't do that. This site has done it really well where it's a nice visual menu. All the elements are in place where we have a call to action. The specific product categories are introduced. The best sellers are introduced. And it's done really well in a visually pleasing way to allow me to basically get into the site and explore in more depth uh, the various offerings that this specific store has to offer. So that's number three. Make your homepage a visual menu. The perfect product pages. So let's continue with just for dogs because I really like their product page. It's not perfect. There are things that I would change, but overall, I think they've done a really nice job. First thing with your product pages is you want to pay attention to your URL structure. You want a URL structure that makes sense and it's logical and it helps people navigate the site. So for example, something that's missing on this site, for example, in my opinion, that I would add is breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs lets people know where they are. So it should be like home, product, category, then this product page or however the site is structured. So we have like just for dogs, products, and then we have the uh, page title. That's okay. I mean, if, if, they, if you're starting to have a lot of different products and you may want to just change it to products slash dogs slash portable, uh, whatever the page title is. And so for example, they have like four dogs and four owners. So I personally would do that. Like this, there should be like, they have this US collections for dogs for owners. So really the product page should be products slash dogs slash page title and then products slash owners. Uh, slash page title. I know I'm nerding out, but like URL structures are just one of those things that <laughs> I pay attention to. And definitely breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs is a big thing that's missing. Uh, I, I know like, when I say breadcrumbs, a lot of people have no idea. What is this guy going on about with breadcrumbs? <laughs> Let me just open up this. So this is a 
website createpro.com. Breadcrumbs are this part right here. And this one, search engines love this because it gives a nice structure to the website and it helps tell, but it's also useful just for visitors because they know where they are on the website. Anyways, let's back out of this. And so this section right here looks great. So I like the imagery that we're using, clear and specific. The images are not blown out. I get a clear view. And I like that we have multiple images where I click and it scrolls down. Not just one picture, like many pictures. So I can, it helps me make a, a purchase decision. Now, like for example, I would change the product that they're using, like they're leading off with this. That's okay. I personally like this image more. I think it's more clear, but Again, whatever, it's fine. They have multiple images, so it's easy to figure out. Right here, portable pet water bottle, right to the point, 21 reviews, then the price, uh, then tax and shipping included, and then we have different colors, different sizes, and it looks great. Now right here, I like that we have a nice button that's big and blue in contrast with the site instead of it being a, just a different color, like black or something, like you have to make buttons stand out. Now with Shopify, I'm not a big fan of this add to cart, buy it now. It's a little bit confusing. What I would rather do is just have one button it says buy it now click buy it now and then something pops out over here and then it says like oh, okay this has been successfully added to your cart continue ship shopping or check out etc that's how i personally would do it but again you just gotta test this with your own shopify store see which one works better i personally i as a user i like to have one button because it's a little bit confusing where i can have two buttons uh, then everything else is in it's in place where we have verified uh, checkout we have uh you know different payment ways I can uh, submit payment. We have product details, guarantee shipping. We have a nice description. Uh, again, allows you to feed your pet anytime, any place, keeps water cool and refreshing. 100% uh, high quality guaranteed food grade material, lightweight and durable uh, and premium promise. So this is done really well. And I like that these, we have social media buttons right there. Uh, I think it's a little strange to have Twitter. I mean, Pinterest, Absolutely, absolutely. Pinterest and, sh and, and Facebook are great. And then we have the reviews. Now, one little thing I would change though too with this product page is like, this is too much. Like this is a little excessive with this image right here. I would definitely would get rid of this. Now I think it's great to show the products and the products in use, but that's also done effectively with the uh, product, like this page down here with showing off the Instagram. What's more important is like have this product page right there. I come down here, we have the reviews. After the reviews, why choose us? Now I want you to hit me with like related products. Uh, don't distract me, you're like this, this product page is getting a little bit long and you're starting to distract me and it has too many images so it could potentially load a little bit slowly, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's just one thing like that. There's a lot of good things and a lot of bad things that I like about this product page. But anyways, I hope that gives you some ideas for how you personally should structure your own specific product pages. Make sure to have multiple images that are clear and crisp and, and not blown out, clear specific title, good URL structure, easy to add to my cart and easy to buy, a nice product description, nice text that's easy to read, uh, minimal share buttons. You don't need to have WhatsApp and, <laughs> and, and like uh, Reddit and LinkedIn and all these other random things on Shopify. Like Pinterest and Facebook are primarily what people are gonna use reviews, and then related products, etc. Number five is email marketing. So I have another video on my channel about email marketing that you can check out. But in general, if you're going to do email marketing, do email marketing right. And so there's a couple of things I like and a couple of things I don't like about the way different Shopify stores do uh, their email list building. So anyways, this is a pop-up on Kindred Splendor, a website I worked with. Um, I really like the design. I like the attention to detail. I like the copy. I'm not crazy that right when I open the site, there's an immediate pop-up I have to click away from. I, you know, I personally would like to at least let me explore the site and then have a pop-up pop up after like two minutes or have an exit intent pop up. So like when I mouse over to the X, then something pops up. That's great because Google's publicly stated that uh, they don't like pop-ups. They interfere too much with the user experience. So I wouldn't use it particularly if you're trying to have content that ranks, like if you have a blog post and you're trying to get free search engine traffic, et cetera, don't have a pop-up on those pages. Uh, and another great spot for the email opt-in form on any site is in the footer. This is definitely one of the highest converting spots that you can take advantage of on a store and it's just a great spot you do need to have a bit better copy though like you have to have a compelling reason for people to subscribe nobody's gonna subscribe because of oh free updates who cares like like this like be the first to find out all the homer hampers gossip 
eh, no, I don't really care. I, I want to like give you have to give me a buying guide, some resource, some like some material that makes it a little bit more compelling and interesting. Like this, you know, sign up and join the Kindred Spirit team and enjoy super discounts and be the first to know about offers and you get 10% off your purchase. So it's like, oh, yeah, no problem. Now, one aspect too, you gotta pay attention to is make sure you do email marketing correctly, as I said at the start. So if I was to subscribe here, I've already subscribed to this site just to test it out, but like they just have it just changes to say thank you. <laughs> and that's it. It's like, whoa, no, send me to a slash thank you page on your site and then tell me, all right, thanks for signing up. We're going to send you this, this, and this. Make sure to check your email, etc. And then take the time to actually have a welcome email. So this is the welcome email from Swim University. So if you sign up to the website, swimuniversity.com, you get this nice welcome email. And so it's like, hey, thanks for signing up. This is what we're going to send. And then it links to my paid products, etc. You could do the same type of deal with your own online store. You have to have some type of welcome message or otherwise you're, it just defeats the purpose of your email marketing efforts. Okay, so like have forms. Can, I would take a second guess about using pop-ups because they do tend to interfere too much. But in general, use the bottom section if you're going to be aggressive about email marketing. Have a compelling reason why people should sign up. And at the minimum, send me to a thank you page and also have a welcome email. And then have an autoresponder set up for at least two weeks where you're sending me like two or three emails a week for at least two weeks and help build that relationship. Otherwise, don't do email marketing. If you don't want to do any of that, <laughs> then don't do email marketing. If you're not going to do it right, then don't do it. Number six is to do blogging correctly if you're going to blog. So for example, one aspect I like of this piece of content right here is that the topic is great. What does exterior painting cost in CT? So this is Painters in Connecticut. This is a lead generation website where they try and get leads from people, like basically, you know, get have people call and send emails, and then send those to refer those calls and emails out to actual clients in the state of Connecticut. I think that's really great uh but this piece of content's <laughs> really disappointing look how short this is it's not even comprehensive there should be h1 h2 h3 tags it should be like maybe a cost analysis of like different regions compare it to other states in the area like whatever just make it more detailed and comprehensive and useful then when i get to the bottom have a call to action where do you want me to go now now that if i was to go through this and read there's nowhere for me to go so i would take this button here and the phone number boom, boom, right at the bottom and drive traffic all the time. Be very, very aggressive with that. And so the other elements are in place. Like the, the topic is great. I like that we're using breadcrumbs up there. So it gives a nice structure to the site. Uh, another great example would be uh, Home Therapy Dallas. Like this is their blog right here. And so, for example, this is a great topic. What is the benefit of PRP hair restoration? This is an anti-aging website. This is a very relevant piece of content for this. But again, very, very disappointing. No thought and effort really went into this. Just a very short little 300 word paragraph. Like use, break it up, H2, H3 tags, use multiple images, show before and after, you know, answer related questions within this piece of content. And then at the bottom, get rid of this categories there. And, and also you shouldn't have your categories be multiple categories with, with any type of blog. One category is it. And a category shouldn't be blog. <laughs> like blog is not a category. Feel better is not a category. You want to pick keyword relevant <laughs> categories for your blog and then get rid of this previous next. And I would just go with boom button right there. That's the phone number. I click it, populates my phone automatically without me having to type it in. And then I have another button there. Contact to say, contact us to make a change. There we go. Because the call to action here is so weak, right? at least they have a call to action, like ready to make a change, call us today, but it needs to be more aggressive. That's why I'm saying like leverage buttons. And one last little thing is pay attention to details like, for example, the URL structure on this is horrible. Blog slash the date slash long page title slash space. Like this makes no sense. Posted by Dallas anti-aging. No, like it should be posted by a person. Why is there a date here? Is this time sensitive content? Is this a news website? No, same with this site. Why is there dates? Like there should be no dates. Dates are ir completely irrelevant. <laughs> you know, you should use dates. Um, if you're publishing a news website, otherwise you just want to keep it simple. You want to have it be blog slash the post title or blog slash category slash post title. It's really up to you. It just depends on how many pieces of, of content you have. Like most of my websites are usually around the 300 blog post marks. So I find that blog, then the post title is fine. 
And also one little thing too, is like this has breadcrumbs. This doesn't have breadcrumbs. You should always use breadcrumbs. I don't understand why people are so against breadcrumbs. <laughs> I'm like the only person on YouTube who's like breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs. <laughs> Anyways, that's my whole point. If you're going to blog, just do it correctly. So they got, both these sites have the elements in correct, the, the correct elements where they're going after specific phrases related to their site to get that free traffic. But you get that free traffic, uh, make sure to convert it. And this is not converting me to do anything. This is like, okay, that was nice, and I'm gonna leave. And the same with this, go down here, okay, I'm done, and I'm gonna leave. Whereas you wanna interrupt that by having a specific call to action. And the last is to pay attention to details. So this is gonna be a broad topic, because I think this website is a great example. It's called standnitty.com. I think they have all the elements in place, but they're just missing little details that make it a little bit more difficult for someone to feel comfortable buying. For example, we have this nice uh, hero image at the top, but what do you see? It's blown out. It's not crisp and sharp. And so it's like, oh, that's like, looks like an amateur. It's weird that we have the logo there and the logo there. It's kind of weird that there's no clear, crisp, one call to action that explains what the site is and like a buy button. Instead, it's just this blown out image. It's just a weird first impression. Uh, we have details up there, free shipping worldwide, Give me a break. Nobody believes that. Anyone who's of reasonable intelligence doesn't believe that. <laughs> okay, so if you want to phrase it like, hey, free shipping on orders over $100, no problem. Hey, free shipping in the United States, okay, that, that at least I can believe that, but I'm not going to believe that shipping is going to be free uh, worldwide. Uh, and what if I want you to ship it to Antarctica? It's going to be free? <laughs> Come on. Now, another little detail, home. You don't need to have a home link in your website for your store. Really, people are will click the logo. Like we could, you could just take a look at websitecreativepro.com. Like I don't have a home link. I never designed any of my websites with a home link. We have the logo there. You want to navigate back to the homepage? You click this. And then we have simple four item menu. And so I like that. I like that we have very simple, simple menu. Uh, so I think that's great. Uh, but there's no need for a home link. Uh, also, the page title. Look at the the page title is literally home page separator standity premium quality blah blah blah. No, 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 no. Like the page title for a home page should be the name of the website, page type or page separator, and then the keyword description of the website. That's basically how you want to structure it. I do like that they have a favicon, so that's great too. And then that is pretty much it. So let's get to the bottom. And I like this down here. They really did a great job of having refund, privacy, terms of service, contact, track order, shipping, about very professional. And like the logo looks crisp and sharp. Excellent. This for the footer is excellent. It has everything that you would want in place uh, and what you'd expect. Because like as a as a buyer, like I want to know what the refund policy is. I want to know what the privacy policy. I want to know all this stuff. I want to know all of these things. And this is where I expect to find it. I want to navigate to the footer and to find it. Uh, now up top here, so kind of weird that we have shipping info. And so I would also consider getting rid of that too. So that's what I mean by like pay attention to details. Like it should be, it should be shop, it should be about, contact, uh, maybe a, another sales page about benefits, maybe some type of like, uh, you know, something else. Maybe you want to have at least like four menu items there. And so you just need to be careful about that. But anyways, that's my last point. Pay attention to details. You have to become detail oriented when you have an online store because with slight mistakes, it just makes people not comfortable buying. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. My name is David, WebsiteCreativePro.com. I encourage you to explore the channel. I create videos every week and I have over 100 videos on this channel and I think you'll like it. So anyways, I'm starting to ramble. I'll leave it there. Have a good day. Bye-bye.